Hey there Nocturnes! Welcome back to English Me! Dito sa Nocturnal Sage, a guide for those left in the dark. Ako nga pala ulit, si Kuya N, ang inyong class president. Noon nakaraang meeting, Mr. Jeremy discuss niya yung tungkol sa a fear of speaking. Pero hindi naman yung mismong fear of speaking pa, merong patikim pa siyang binigay. Yun yung tungkol sa kung papaano natin mabibigod yung self-confidence natin. By remembering, no? dapat lang maalala lang natin na iba-iba tayo, iba-iba ng pag-uugali, personalidad, at dapat respetuhin natin yon. At kapag nagsasalita tayo, pinapakita natin yung ating pagkatao sa iba. Hindi ba niya tuwirang sinabi yon, pero isa yung paraan para mabus yung ating self-confidence. Na tuwing kinakausap natin ng iba o tayo yung tumatayo sa entablado, ang pinapakita natin ay ang ating pagkatao at hindi lamang tayo basta nagbibigay na impormasyon. Bilang follow-up doon, ngayong gabi naman, yung continuation ng kanyang lecture, yun, mag-focus na tayo doon sa paano natin ma-overcome yung labis na takot sa pagsasalita. Yung tipong may iwasan o mababawasan man lang sana yung, let's say, panginginig ng boses o siguro kung man boses yung mga paa o kamay pag nagsasalita. Basta, ang focus natin sa klase ngayon ay fear control. So, papaano natin to magagawa? Samahan nyo na ako sa ating klase para malaman natin. Oh, English me! Now, there is one obstacle that we have to, we don't have to treat it as an enemy, but it can be our friend if we're able to control it. And that is what we call stage fright. It is the fear of speaking in front of many people. If I can tell you one trivia, I saw um, some stats listing down and ranking the phobias among American people. And you, I was surprised to note that stage fright was on top of the other fears. Do you think that's also true in our society among Filipinos? Have you ever been like this? The child on your left and the woman on the right? Okay, what do we exactly fear here? Is it the act of speaking? Well, I think no one is afraid to talk to themselves while being alone in the bathroom. Not unless you're aware that someone may be eavesdropping on you. In any case where we're alone and we can talk to our th ourselves, we don't feel like throwing up. But when we are in front of many people, let's say in a Zoom meeting or previously in front of the class, and many people are simultaneously listening to us, looking at us, and we feel that they might not accept our message the way we want them to. Okay, that's what we're afraid of. We're afraid actually of the consequences as mentioned by Eugene E. White and Claire R. Henderleader. We are afraid of the result of speaking, of the negativity that that we may elicit from the audience because we, I mean, who here wants to be judged negatively? A certain amount though of nervous tension is necessary if you want to perform very well. So the fear of public speaking is not entirely bad. And in fact, we need a certain level of it. So the key here, is just to regulate it. Um, not to say that you have to eradicate the fear. You don't have to wish it away. It will stay where it wants to stay. And all you have to do is just to be aware of it and try to channel it towards your message. Focus more on the importance of what you're saying, of what you want to achieve through your speech and not, and not much on what you want people to understand from your speech. Focus on the process more not the result that is the that, that that's what we should train ourselves to do when it comes to handling stage fright okay just maintain an adequate level of it just tame it we need stage fright but we do not need too much of it okay so it's up to you use your psychological skills how you're going to prime yourselves to be able to speak to uh, other people especially in a large zoom meeting or google meet meeting and be able to deliver your message gracefully now, here are some tips for handling stage fright. First, start with topics that you really like. 
This speech class is a perfect way to begin your practice. At least it's controlled and you're able to talk about anything under the sun. So practice speaking with people, even in private communication. If let's say you're offline, you're not with your teacher, you can still practice, as mentioned before, with the people immediately accessible to you. If you're not the conversation starter most of the time, then maybe you can once in a while initiate a conversation about a topic that you really like and practice with your um, family, with your friends, if you're able to meet up with each other. You talk about anything that you really like to talk about. That is where you start. Why? It's most likely the topic that you have more ideas of. At least it's something that you don't have to read an article about before you start talking about it. And next, prepare thoroughly. Okay, I did mention that if it's a topic that you like, the less need for you to read about it. But if it's a speech class and you want to practice with your classmates, then you have to prepare in the sense that you have to organize your thoughts well. How are you going to begin your speech? Okay, the way you carry yourself may will be different from the way you uh, do it when around just let's say one or two persons than when you do it with around 35 people. So your projection will have to be more exaggerated than when you do it privately. Okay, that's what we mean by prepare thoroughly here. So aside from refreshing your ideas about your chosen topic, you also have to consider how you're going to deliver it. What examples will you use to elaborate your points, for instance? It has to be, again, isomorphism. Your supporting information, evidence, examples, etc. should be as much as possible relatable to your listeners. Three, know more about your topic than your audience. That's why I, I told you to start with topics that you really like. Because the higher the chance that you will know more than your audience. And if ever you encounter audience members who know as much, then you, know, you don't have to consider it a disadvantage. Actually, you can be beneficial to you because at least you have someone who will participate in your discussion and be able to make it more engaging. If, and it will be an evidence too that your audience is listening if they respond appropriately to your speech. Four, remember that you already appear confident than you feel. Actually, it's hard to trace stage fright in people. If you're, let's say, presiding, leading a Zoom or Google Meet meeting, people will not notice that your hands may be trembling behind the screen. And even, it's also true in face-to-face -face interactions. Since the speaker is often far away from the audience, the audience will find it hard to notice the shaking of fingers, of legs, or any other body part. Not unless they move closer to the speaker around, let's see if they get to be a 12 inches far away only. But it doesn't have to happen because most of the time you, you have a conducive space for public speaking. You have sufficient space to walk around. That is in face-to-face -face interactions, but for online communications such as this, well, you're at a disadvantage. You can actually hide. You don't have to even try hard to hide your fear. So you can just feel it. And at the same time, through your facial expressions, you appear firm most of the time to others. They won't really track uh, that you're afraid while speaking, not unless your voice shakes. Fifth, be confident that others also share the same fears. So there are also listeners who understand what it feels like to speak to a large number of people. And just remember, while you speak, your listeners may also be admiring you for your bravery to talk about that topic. And at the back of their minds, they may be thinking, I wish I had the same courage to do that, to stand up in front of many people and then share my ideas. And then finally, Audiences are generally friendly. They're not like in the movies where you see an audience throwing tomatoes at a lousy performer. Even if you perform lousily, people in reality will, yes, like what uh, has been said in tip five, they will understand you and they will not throw tomatoes at you. They will, they might, you know, even have sympathy for you and expect that you'll do your best as you recover from, let's say, any mispronunciation or a misinformation so there you have it continue surviving in the dark 
so that we can continue talking more about how communication works in the next episode. Oh, English me. Blas. You're already in your late twenties, and you never had any boyfriend nor girlfriend. When are you planning to get married? Ano ang sasabihin mo? I find it interesting that. Among the people in your age whom I know, you seem to be the only one who doesn't prioritize romantic relationships. Have you by any chance committed yourself to single blessedness? I'm wondering what your mission in life is. Kung nagustuhan ninyo ang episode na ito, pakilike natin sa baba. Tapos kung may mga katanungan kayo o suggestion paan uh, ma-improve yung lesson na ito, mag-comment na lang din. Uh, I-share nyo naman ang video na ito. Mas maganda nga yung buong playlist eh. Sa mga kakilala ninyo na nagtitake ng oral com. Tadyo naman na uh, sa panahon ngayon, eh, kanya-kanya na diskarte sa paghahanap ng reliable reference materials. At kasama na dyan ang Nocturnal Siege kung naniniwala kayo reliable ito. Kung gusto ninyo ng mga makakausap tungkol sa mga bagay na hindi nyo mauungkat sa mga usapan nyo ng pamilya o kaibigan, sumali kayo ng Nocturn Space para makamit kayo ng mga taong kapares nyo ng interest. At ikit sa lahat, mag-subscribe at itap nyo yung notification bell para hindi kayo mahuli sa anong mga updates. New episodes every Tuesday at 8pm. Salamat sa panonood. Ako muli si Kuya N. Kita-kit sa susunod na episode ng English Me dito sa Nocturnal Sage. A guide for those left in the dark.